Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Now I want to split this video up into three main parts. Number one is I'm going to be showing you how to find the best business idea that works for you. And we'll be going through the same structures and systems that we do every time we launch a new business here. And number two, I'm going to be talking you through how to get clients before you've even started your business because you want to know you've got some paying customers ready lined up, right? That's the idea of having a business is we need to make some money. So how can we guarantee that we're going to make sales from day one and we're going to be showing you some of those strategies and ideas as well. And then number three, I'm gonna give you some ideas to get you started. Things that are really hot right now in the UK, things that in 2021 are gonna be absolutely booming markets. And if you already have a skill set within these areas or if you have no experience whatsoever, you've got no money to start a business, you've got no idea of what you want to do, then I'm gonna share with you some strategies and tactics that you can use to launch your very own business. Now, if you're new around here, please hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell as well. That way you'll be updated every time I upload a new video. Don't worry, I only upload around about once a week, so you're not gonna get bombarded with emails and we'd really, really appreciate it to help us grow the channel here and grow our community. I've made it my absolute mission to give more away for free than most people will have you pay for. So I really do hope that you can join our community and follow everything that we're doing and we can provide some real value into your business. If you like the content as as well then make sure you hit the like button and leave a comment as well let us know if there's anything specific you would like us to break down in more detail now starting a business can be really confusing it can be overwhelming a lot of people are unsure and uncertain about exactly what kind of business do they want I think one thing that we've learned over the last year is the fact that how uncertain the times are and actually how having a job and being employed by someone isn't any safer than having your own business. If anything, it's actually less safe because if anything happens to that business, you're without a job and now you have no structure moving forward. Whereas at least if you have your own business, you understand what's happening with the finances. You can tell if it's on the up or if it's on the down as well and you can adjust those things slightly. So no doubt if you're looking to start your own business, that's the reason you're here and you want us to come up with some ideas. So let me share with you some um, examples and things and tips and tricks that we use in order to create businesses and things that will definitely work really well for you. Now just to give you a little bit of background, my name's Ross Welch and I own three businesses at the moment. My main business is a video production company. So we provide video content for clients to help them sell more, to help businesses. And uh, I'm very fortunate I get to travel the world working on some amazing projects. Now I've built that business, uh, scaled it up to past six figures within a couple of years. So everything happened really quick. We employed a team of people. I moved into this studio here, which we've recently had developed. So that journey has been really key and fundamental uh, for learning about business, learning the hard way through trial and error because there wasn't many people who uh, were around online actually giving you information like I'm giving back to you now. So that was very tough, although we managed to do some things very, very quickly. And on the back of that, I've now got an online business as well. So I have a coaching academy where I, I mentor people one-to-one, -one, really help them grow their businesses. And I also have a rental business as well where we rent out studio space, desk space, and things like that. So I'm quite adverse with growing businesses, startups, and these systems and structures that I'm gonna be teaching you will be everything that I follow every single time I start a new business. So there's absolutely no bullshit here. There's no lying just to create more content. Everything. I'm I'm telling you is because I've implemented it myself. I've learned this stuff from other mentors, from business seminars. I've spent thousands of pounds investing in my own learning. And now I'm just cutting through the things that worked for me and sharing them with you on my channel. And I really do hope that we can continue growing this. So do make sure you hit that subscribe button. So how to find the best business idea for you. And the last bit there is really, really important is the best business idea for you. It needs to be a business that works for you. It needs to be a business that excites you and motivates you otherwise you're not going to want to work in it there's no point in creating a job that you hate for yourself is there so you might as well create a business that you enjoy there's loads of YouTube videos about oh you know the best five business ideas to make all this money and generally speaking they're just the same idea reworded differently and it doesn't matter because it's if it's not what you're interested in then you're gonna end up hating your business. Now, we're only on the planet for a given amount of time, right? So we wanna make sure that we have a job that we enjoy because we spend most of our time working, okay? So 
I'm gonna give you some tips and strategies right now that are gonna really help you focus on what it is that you're passionate about and how to find a business idea out of that that will work for you. So what I want you to do is I want you to reach out to your friends and family and ask them, if I wasn't doing the job that I currently do or if I wasn't doing uh, what I currently do at the moment, what do you think I would be good at? or if I was to have a business, what do you think I should go into? Because your friends and family will know you better than sometimes you know yourself, and they'll be able to see from an outsider's point of view opportunities that arise within you and, and what opportunities are available to you or what things that you'd be good at. If I was to give you an example, my brother recently wanted to start a business and he asked me this exact same question. And I said, well, what do people come to you about? What do people ask you for advice about? What do people say that you're good at? And he was like, well, actually, you know, a lot of people come to me and ask me about fitness, health and fitness tips and things like that. And I was like, well, there you go. Do you enjoy health and fitness? And he said, well, yeah, absolutely. So it was obvious that he should start some business around that. And I'm going to go into different types of business models and things that could work for you um, later on in this video as well. But friends and family are a really good place to start. Ask them what they think you would be good at doing. Once you've heard back from them, I want you to write their responses down on a piece of paper or in a book or something like that. And then underneath that, I want you to write down what do people come to you and ask for advice for? Do they ask you for advice on grooming their animals? Do they ask you for advice on stocks and shares? Do they ask you for advice on fitness? Do they ask you on advice on cameras? What do they ask you for advice about? And list that down. Now don't worry if those things that they ask you for advice about are the exact same things that they said that they think you would be good at doing or be good at having a business for. Because if we get a system where the same things keep popping up, then it kind of paints that picture for you and lets you know what you think that you should do and a good business idea. So. Write down all the things that you, people come to you for advice about. Now, in a new column, I want you to write down what skills do you currently have that you could turn into a business? What, what skill set, what knowledge do you have that you can then go on and do something else with? And finally, just underneath that, under the skill set, I want you to write down what you're most passionate about because it's really important that you're passionate about your business. Again, otherwise, you're just not going to get going to want to get up, especially on a dark winter's morning and work on your business. So you want to be really fired up. You want to be excited for this opportunity that is about to face you. Now, once you've got those things together, there should be really obvious points about what business ideas would be good for you. So perhaps you've said that, you know, you currently are really fit and healthy and that's a good skill set that you have. You know how to use gym equipment perhaps. And actually your friends come to you for fitness advice and on the, on the plus side, your hobby is fitness. So why not just create a business around that? Or perhaps your friends say, I don't know, I think you'd be really good at doing something really arts and crafts style. And then actually say, well, one of your hobbies is painting. Well, you've all got a skill set as well because you know how to paint and you really enjoy doing that. You've been doing it for some time. So why not create a business around artwork? I've actually got a good friend of mine and I, I helped set up her business and she does dot work art. Uh, she does dot artwork or dot work. I don't know what the correct term is, but basically it's loads of little dots and they create amazing pictures out of it. And it was because she was able to turn something that she was passionate about that people came to her about and turned that into a business. So sometimes the, the opportunities for business ideas can be staring you in the face and rather than just going down some generic route and following the herd and following ideas that you're not that passionate about why don't you just do something that you're already good at and something that you enjoy doing i think they're the things that are really important so if you follow that structure it should provide you with a really good idea or a baseline of what industry what ideas that you can come up with and i'll expand on this in point number three in a moment now in point number two i want to talk about getting clients because it's important you know that your business is going to be a success before you spend all this time on it initially and for a lot of people that's the biggest fear the fear of failure the fear of their business not being successful the fear of putting all of this time and energy and putting yourself out there and saying hey this is my business, this is what I want to do, and it just completely falling face first on the ground. We wanna avoid that at all costs. So there's a couple of strategies that I wanna share with you that will tell you if your business is a good idea or not. 
And number one is a waiting list. Waiting lists are a great idea. Now this can really be as simple or as complicated as you want to make it. On a simple end of the spectrum, you can create a business Facebook page and then you could put out a poster that says, you know, come in soon, this is my business idea. It might be Jane's Fitness uh, personal training, something like that, or I'm sure you do a much better job of naming your business than, than I will. Um, but you can create a Facebook page and then you might say, you know, for anyone that comments below that they're interested, you will receive a 10% discount when we actually come to launch our business later on in the year or in next month or whatever. You, that's on the simple end of the spectrum where you're just generating some kind of buzz around it. On the other end, you could use a platform like Squarespace, Wix, some kind of website builder to create a one page website where it just says, this is what your business idea is, this is what you're going to be doing. If you're interested, leave your email address here and then it will automatically start to build up a mailing list for you so that when you launch your business, you know that all of these people are interested and therefore there's a demand for your product. Some people will hold back. Some people will want to wait and see what your pricing is like, what things are about your product or your service, what kind of things are you offering. But that's a really good way of knowing whether or not your idea is good or not. Now, also, you want to leverage your current and existing network. So when you're at this phase of wanting to create a waiting list with some kind of discount or offer, give them some kind of reason that they're going to leave their details with you. You want to give this out to your friends and family and ask them to share it and spread it far and wide. You know, if you go to 10 friends and ask them to show two friends each and those friends ask two friends, you can see how it starts to really build up and starts to get your name out there. Some people are really, really scared of doing this because it does mean you need to put yourself out there. But having your business is all about stepping outside your comfort zone. You will only ever have what you do at the moment if you stay inside your comfort zone. So if you want to achieve more, you need to do more. So, and that, that's actually one of our sayings is want more, do more, become more, because you need to follow that strategy in order to break outside your comfort zone and in order to achieve more and grow your businesses. So don't be scared. What are your friends gonna say if your business doesn't do that well? Do you think they're gonna laugh at you and mock you? It's very unlikely. If we're talking realistically here, most of your friends are gonna want you to be as successful as you can do. Otherwise, they're probably just not good friends to begin with. Or they're just super jealous that you're doing something that they want to do but just don't have the willpower, the drive or determination to do. So don't be worried about putting yourself out there who cares at the end of the day? If our business failed, if any one of our business fails, you know, it was fun while it lasted and you know, we'll just move on to something else. We'll find something new. I don't really care what other people think because I'm here living my passions. I'm doing the things that I want to do. So who can tell me that that's wrong and that I shouldn't be doing those things and I should just get a job working for someone that I really hate and just not enjoy life? You know, that seems like such a backwards thing, but somehow that is the norm for so many people. So do the things you're passionate about. A waiting list is a great way to know if your business is gonna be successful ahead of time. Now, if you're a service-based business or similar to us, perhaps you're a freelancer um, where you're doing freelance videography or whatever, and you're wanting to grow into a production company and then employ a team of people or whatever it is, if you're a freelancer or that kind of nature, then what you can do is you can start to do lead generation. So again, you could offer potential clients, potential prospects a discount for ready for when you launch. So again, you can use this mailing list, this structure, this weight and this system, or at minimum, you can gather all the information, all the details, the websites, the addresses, the email addresses from um, relevant people within the at the companies that you want to target and you can create a spreadsheet uh, what we would call a CRM but a spreadsheet that lists all of these people so that the day that you launch your business you know you've got an email list ready to go out to these people and say hey you know are you interested in my services and you can start having those conversations so there's things that you can do ahead of time in order to make it the best give you the best chance of success now finally, I do want to share with you some ideas that are beneficial to people living in the UK right now. Things that are gonna be really, really hot over 2021 and things that will enable you to guide you in the right direction. Now one of these, and the first one I wanna start with, is taking what you know and teaching it to other people. 
online courses, online teaching, mentorship, business coaching, things like that that are typically happening online at the moment is gonna be a huge, huge industry. Over 2020, it grew massively and it's such a lucrative place. So if you want to teach people, if that's something that you're passionate about and you feel that you could do a good job at, that's what you can do. So what I explained in tip one was finding about the industry that you want to work in, find out what kind of things you think that you would be good at doing and what kind of passions do you have. And this is more about how you can implement that. So could you do an online course? Could you do some kind of coaching online that enables um, you to make money, people will pay you for your time. And again, don't assume that just because you know something that everyone else does, because very seldom is that the case. Another strategy would be to buy and sell. eBay, Amazon, they are places where businesses are currently operating a buy and sell strategy and are making lots and lots of money. And the reason they're doing that is because of course everyone's at home and they're buying things online. So you can very simply set up an eBay shop. It's just about finding the right deal and you wanna always make sure that your markups are good. So you wanna be buying stuff at a low price and selling it at a higher price. But don't be confused with what you think an item is worth versus what it's actually worth or what someone is willing to pay for it. I'm not a huge fan of the buy and sell structure but for some people who are really stuck and don't know what to do and don't have any passions or hobbies outside of that and they just want to make a little bit on the side then a buy and sell strategy is something that can work really well you might get buy some stuff from Facebook marketplace and sell it or you might want to repurpose it even if you're a little bit more arts and crafts you might want to buy an old wardrobe paint it make it look very modern and sell it at a profit so those are things that can work really well as a buy and sell strategy Online shop and retail is another avenue which you can look at. So if you are really good at arts and crafts or perhaps, I don't know, your friends say you're the best cupcake maker there is and you create a cupcake making business or a candle making business, get involved with places like Not On The High Street, Etsy, Groupon, things like that and start to really push your products out to those places and create your own website where people can come and purchase your items. So if you do want to create products, whether it's clothing or it's anything other than a buy and sell strategy and you're just focused on creating it and selling it, then definitely look at those options because that would be a great place to list your business. Social media marketing. Now, if you are younger, perhaps you're a teenager, social media marketing, you're gonna be in a great opportunity for this because you are the generation that are pushing social media forward and you probably know a lot more about it than a lot of older people do as well. So therefore you can go and act as a social media marketing agency by running adverts for people, by running campaigns, getting their businesses seen, using Google AdWords, things like that. You can learn about that stuff online and then you can implement that and create a business around that where you can actually go into businesses and help them make sales through your business where you are marketing their content for them and you're driving people through to their website, you're driving traffic through to them and therefore they're gonna make more sales. So social media marketing is a really, really hot one, especially for 2021. Now, if you have an eye for photography, perhaps that's something that you really enjoy or filmmaking, then it kind of makes sense to go down the content creation route and build a business similar to our main one. So businesses are actively looking for product photography, for business overview videos, for returning to work videos, health and safety videos, all these kind of things. And people are going to need content for their advertising, their social media, their marketing, all things like that. So if you are passionate about those things and you're, and you're good at taking um, for photos and creating content for films and things like that, then that is a really good industry to go down. You can set yourself up as a production company, as a freelance videographer, and that strategy would just involve you outreaching to businesses and trying to work with people. Portfolio in any freelance area is really, really important. I've created some other videos about that. So do try to get a portfolio first, and you might do that using a free of charge strategy while you start, or a swap strategy where you can swap your services for uh, their products. So at least there's some kind of payment taking place or some kind of gain for you to be doing work for free. Now, finally, you can take what you know and teach it. I've already said this in an online term, but you can also do this face to face. 
Admittedly, this is harder to do at the moment, which is why I've left it to the very end, but you can become a consultant. Businesses will hire you based on your skill set and your knowledge. So perhaps you've been made redundant from work at the moment or your job is looking unsecure, but you've got loads and loads of experience within sales or marketing or whatever it is that you do, perhaps it's IT related. You can walk into businesses as a consultant and just provide them effectively freelance ad hoc help at a price. So again, this is all about knowing your worth as well and having an understanding about how much you should charge as a freelancer is tough. You need to base it on your experience and what other people in your industry are offering. And if you don't know what they're offering, then outreach to some people and ask them, hey, you know, would you mind me asking how much you charge for your services at the moment? To give you some kind of idea. Portfolio in those areas is really, really key. So if you don't have a portfolio, I generally say that people should start on around about £100 a day, or if you're working hourly, somewhere around about £20 an hour. If you are not starting you know, with no portfolio or you don't have any um, experience in that industry at the moment in time. If you are more experienced and you've been made redundant and you have a huge amount of uh, IT experience, then you can obviously go and charge a higher ticket item at the start. But it's all about getting those customers initially. Now, I really hope that you found this video useful. I've tried to break it down more than a lot of the online videos that say about, you know, the best five ways to make money quickly. It's important that your business works for you and I've given you these strategies on how to make it as successful as possible from day one and also how to know what the right business is for you and what path you should go down. Please do leave a comment and a like. Let me know what you thought of this video, what things you're gonna implement and I'd love to see how your business grows. So do feel free to drop links to your mailing list, things like that. Let me know and uh, until the next video, peace.